Well, hey there, pet parent. This week, we're going back to dog training and dog behavior for our topic. And this is another solo episode and one that I am very, very passionate about. So if you've been following me for any length of time, uh, and if you're in my group on Facebook, which is called the Pet Parenting Reset Community, there is a free file in there about why I choose positive reinforcement training. And there are tons of links to resources in that article, but I have expanded upon that for today's episode with lots more resources uh, and hopefully explanation because Zach George, who is the biggest dog trainer on YouTube and someone who I have been following for a long time and I absolutely love his methods. Um, He is a positive reinforcement dog trainer, but he has kind of been making waves in the last, uh, well, since the end of December with some videos that he put up, one about balanced training in general, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, what balanced training is, why I don't subscribe to it, why I don't use it, and Really, (laughs) the reason that he's been making these waves is because he kind of made this correlation between, and and he called out the fact that men in the dog training industry are very demeaning towards the women in the dog training industry. And he made that correlation that women are more likely to use science-backed methods i.e. positive reinforcement, whereas men are less likely to do that and more likely to use what we call aversives, fear, pain, you know, the shock collars, choke collars, prong collars, all those things. So that really was kind of how he made waves (laughs) by this like men-women debate. And I personally think that while that is true and it needs to be said, uh, I personally think that it has caused a lot of people to lose sight of the real message, which is why we should not be using balanced training. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on The Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. So really quickly before we get into this episode, I do just want to throw in this little disclaimer that I know that you are listening to this episode because you love your dogs. You probably love all dogs just like I do. And I am in no way saying that people who use balance training don't love their, I think anybody who gets into dog training does it because they love dogs. Maybe there's a small percentage that don't, but overall, overall, overwhelmingly, we do it because we love dogs. And whatever methodology you subscribe to, it is because you truly think that is the best way to handle, manage a situation. That's the best way you can make an impact in these dogs' lives. And so I'm not intending to demean anyone with this episode. I fully believe that whatever methodology methodologies that you use, I, I, I think that you are coming at it because you care about the dogs. And that is something that brings us all together. We all care about the dogs. My intention is only to explain my reasoning for choosing positive reinforcement and why I don't subscribe to other methods of training that you or someone you know may use. So let's start off with what is balanced training? Because on the surface, it sounds pretty freaking awesome, right? Balance. We want balance and everything. We seek balance and everything. I would, I, there's a whole other topic out there how really while we may want balance and everything and seek balance and everything, that's really not reality. But I'm not going to go down that road. Let's just talk about what balanced dog training is 
and then I can explain to you why I don't subscribe to it. Balanced dog training is any approach to dog training that uses both positive reinforcement and aversive training methods to achieve behavior modification. And that means that a trainer can use both treats to reward and a shot collar to punish, the shot collar being negative reinforcement. Or that a trainer could use both treats to reward and take away their favorite toy for an unwanted behavior, which would be negative punishment. The big question here is this. Is it ever necessary to use punishment, physical punishment specifically, but any punishment in behavior modification? If so, what scientific proof is there to support this reasoning? Of course, the two scenarios that I just gave you are nowhere near the same thing. And I understand how most of us will at some point use negative punishment from time to time without realizing that's even what it is. Like, I'm not so naive as to believe that that doesn't go on or exist. And even people who are fully in on positive reinforcement, sometimes these things just happen. You get really frustrated. You're in the moment. You might lose your temper. So sometimes these things like taking away a toy might happen. So as a dog trainer, being someone who is responsible for teaching people appropriate interactions with their dogs, the person that gets asked all the questions about how to parent their dog, being the person who has to go home at the end of a training session and know that I gave that pet parent the best possible information to train and raise a happy, healthy dog to thrive in that household, I have to make a choice on what I feel will best benefit that dog and strengthen the bond between that dog and their parent. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. So why do I choose positive reinforcement and not balanced training? So and again, anything I talk about today, I will give you the links to in the show notes. There are actually a lot more links in the blog post, which normally I would not have made uh, live by now because my Patreon family gets it first. <laughs> but because this episode is coming out and I want you to have as much information as possible and as more as many data points as possible, I've gone ahead and made that blog post live on my main blog website. So you can go to the petparentingreset.com and at the top it, you can click blog and that will take you to my blog website, which is jessicalfisher.com. So either way you want to get there, you can get there. But um, so I say that because I'm kind of leaning into a, a quote from Zach George in a YouTube video that he made, one of the ones I think that was causing some waves. And uh, so if you want to link to that video, check the show notes. And he says, in learning theory, the principles that govern how all animals learn, punishments and aversion are actually never required. There is no known instance in the animal kingdom where using physical punishment is required to create new behavior or to stop unwanted behavior. So positive reinforcement dog training uses a rewards-based system to encourage behaviors that we want our dogs to do. And I often explain it to my in-home clients like this. So mammals do not learn in negatives. Humans and dogs alike learn best when they're directed to the appropriate behavior. Simply saying no does not provide any direction. And this is why training in negatives is so difficult and ultimately does not work. By rewarding the behaviors we do want to see, our dogs, humans as well, are more likely to choose the behaviors in the future that provided them a reward. 
The use of fear and pain has long-term implications on your dog, often leading to fear and anxiety-related disorders, not to mention the health effects of consistent cortisol level increases in your dog in response to the fear and pain. So the bottom line here is that balance training uses methods that correlate with increases in fear and anxiety in dogs, not exclusive to training sessions, which in itself is difficult to manage, but fear and anxiety in dogs can also lead to more severe behavioral issues such as incessant barking or growling and resource guarding, just to name a couple. There is one thing that somehow just keeps poking its ugly head up. <laughs> and I even went to um, a training session recently where the couple, the, the husband even more so, but the wife as well, we're using loads of terminology that are really outdated, talking about being in control of their dog, talking about dominating their dog, talking about obedience, talking about um, just these, all of these terms and are really outdated. They're all related to alpha theory or pack theory. So I think it's important that we understand why it's why we need to leave that in the past. So what is alpha theory, pack theory? Alpha theory was derived by dog trainers from research conducted by David Meck and his team looking at wolves in captivity. The wolves studied were captured from around the world and placed into an enclosure together. From the findings of this study, pack theory and alpha theory were born into dog training. This was back in the 1970s. The study was incredibly flawed as it in no way re actually replicated how wolves actually live in the wild. Mech has spent many, many years debunking and rebuking the research that he and his team put out into the world back in the 1970s. He has tried for many years, so far unsuccessfully, to have his book removed from publication because of the damage it has done to so many dogs around the world. Dogs are sentient beings, and they, like our wolf counterparts in the wild, live in family units. Family units consist of one breeding pair and their offspring. Sounds an awful lot like your family, doesn't it? <laughs> While it makes sense that this family unit would be referred to as a pack, there are negative connotations associated with this word, and there is a strong push from the force-free training community to end the use of the word. Dogs International has an excellent article on why we should put an end to the use of the word pack. Now, just kind of a little side note here. I don't have a problem using the word pack, and that's you can probably see that's apparent in the way that I, I worded that last part. I actually think it's a great word to describe what's going on as long as we can disassociate those negative connotations that have been associated with it. So when we think of a pack, the first thing you probably think of is that there has to be an alpha. Well, that's not really true. <laughs> um, of course, with the breeding pair, they are like, they are responsible for finding the food. They're responsible for caring for their offspring. So there is a certain level of respect that the breeding pair will have from their offspring and for each other for the different things that the male and the female each provide to their family unit, there's always going to be, there's, it's never like an even playing field for everyone. That's just not the way the world works. But the idea that when you hear the word pack, the first thing you think of is, oh, I have to be the alpha. That is what we really need to get rid of and dis disassociate with the word pack. Otherwise, I think it's a perfectly fine word. <laughs> So using alpha theory and physical dominance over your dog can and will end badly for many dogs and their owners. The use of physical force tells your dog it's my way or else, but in complete, it completely eradicates the bond that you and your dog should be sharing. 
When you work in cooperation with your dog, they are much more likely to follow your lead while using fear-based training will ultimately lead to your dog having to choose to growl and ultimately biting to escape situations. Essentially, your dog can't trust you and therefore you can't trust your dog. And that's no way to live. That's no way to coexist. Using rewards-based training allows your dog to understand the behaviors you want to see while also providing them the appropriate framework to get there. And Bark, Barks from the Guild has also a really great article on why we need to leave alpha and pack theories in the past. Again, that will be linked in the show notes. So just to kind of give you a couple, and there are many, but just to give you a couple of ideas of some of the science behind what I'm talking to you about, um, there was a study that came out in Applied Animal Behavior Science, that's the journal, volume 85, it's called Training Dogs with the Help of the Shock Collar, Short and Long-Term Behavioral Effects, and it shows that dogs, that a sh when a shock collar was used, there were, there were short-term effects, though the dogs that were trained very harshly but without the shock collar, so similarly just without the shock collar, um, that the short-term was kind of minimal, but the long-term effects of using the shock collar was severe. So... Um, these, they're saying the conclusion, therefore, that being trained is stressful, that re receiving shocks is a painful experience to the dogs, and that the shock collar dogs evidently have learned that the presence of their owner announces the reception of shocks even outside of the normal training context. So it definitely breaks down the bond that you have and creates a fearful dog. Um, so that is one study I will link in the show notes. Another study um, the, uh, from the Journal of Veterinary Behavior, the effects of using aversive training methods on dogs, um, also came to the conclusion that uh, uh, those working with or handling dogs should rely on positive reinforcement methods and avoid using positive punishment and negative reinforcement as much as possible. So just a couple out of a lot. So I will include, uh, again, there are loads of um, these links in the blog post, and I will include some of them in the show notes for you to check out as well as some other uh, really, really great uh, research being done with dogs. Duke University, Patricia McConnell is, is a really great positive reinforcement dog trainer. Dr. Sophia Yen, um, having done some studies on uh, the effects of aversion training in dogs. So there's a lot out there uh, to really break down what's going on in the with dog training and why we should be really focusing on positive reinforcement. But the bottom line is that for me as a professional, I really have to choose wisely. And I think as a pet parent, you do too, but this is kind of about why I choose positive reinforcement training. So for me, choosing wisely is like, I, I have to be so careful about what I put into a pet parent's head. So I would never make assumptions that aversives are never going to be a part of a dog's life, just as they're are always going to be a part of our lives, right? So things happen. <laughs> Situations can and will arise where in, in the moment, some form of assertion will be necessary for you to intervene to protect your dog. And the example that Zach uses in his video is of breaking up a dog fight. The appropriate way to break up a dog fight is to distract the dogs using some sort of noise, usually the louder the better, to startle them, to distract them. And some people will also physically break up a fight by literally physically interjecting themselves between the dogs. And while I can't suggest that approach due to the likelihood that you might be injured, I have actually done it and understand how this is our first instinct to protect our dog. But even that, in either way, that's aversive, right? We are, we, we're providing negative stimulation um, when it comes to the appropriate way, which is using some sort of loud noise. That's aversive, but necessary in the situation. 
So the distinction here is that the assertion is done in the moment as an act of desperation and is not how you would train a dog not to fight with another dog. In reality, dog reactivity to other dogs is a complex issue that requires a well thought out plan to help the reactive dog alter their perception of other dogs. So for me, what it all comes down to is not changing every single interaction that a pet parent has with their dog, but instead providing them the framework to better understand how their dog thinks and learns and giving that pet parent the tools to modify their dog's unwanted behaviors while keeping their bond healthy and thriving. I can't be so naive as to think that a dog parent will never raise their voice at their dog or even that they won't forget their training and snap the leash when their dog pulls from time to time out of frustration. But what I can do is provide them with a roadmap to come back to in order to mend the bond they have with their dog. So this is why I choose to only present positive reinforcement methods to my clients and why I will not um, support or use balanced training methods. So again, make sure to check out the full blog post with links to everything. And I, I hope that can help somebody out there, maybe whether that is better understand what balanced training is because you've heard of it and you just weren't sure what it is, um, or hope, hopefully to understand why positive reinforcement training is the best way to train a dog and also the best way to create and continue a you know thriving life for your dog but also a very strong bond between you and your dog so that you both thrive together so with that i'm going to end today's episode thank you so much for hanging out with me and i can't wait to talk to you again next week for now please give your pets some extra love from me and i'll talk to you next week Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the furry family coach. Just go to the furry and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's the furry family and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.